Greetings, YouTube. Got my Cthulhu eating a Dalek shirt. Time to do a gaming video. Um, someone asked me in my 5,000 subscriber Q&A about using horror in games. Um, I'm filming this in October of 2017. Let's see when it gets published. Um, and I mentioned that the question was a little broad that I probably want to dedicate a video to it. And here we are. I think it's difficult to do horror well in role-playing games. Part of that is the medium we're dealing with. It's a lot like telling ghost stories around a campfire. Unless the atmosphere is just right, it's going to fall flat on its face. And people sitting around a table covered in charts and miniatures and dice and Cheetos and soda and coffee and what have you. Um, and if you're an adult, maybe adult beverages such as beer, isn't really conducive to that kind of a, of an atmosphere. Now, some people will use soundtracks. I've never used soundtracks in, for games. Not that I haven't had music uh, in the background occasionally, but not really for a mood. Um, because it's it's difficult to pace a game. And if you suddenly cue up horror-type music, you've given it away. You've, you've spoiled yourself. You've played yourself. Because now the people in the, sitting at that table know, oh, we're entering a horror um, phase. So they know what's going to happen. It's kind of like people that enter a Call of Cthulhu game knowing it's a Call of Cthulhu game. They know what the outcome is. you got three choices for the outcome of a Call of Cthulhu campaign. Insanity, death, or insanity, and then death. That's it. Which is why I can't understand why anyone plays them. You know where it's going to end up. And some people like the trip. I'm not one of them. And I don't think it's any particular system is going to be is going to lend itself to horror, whether you're into traditional games such as myself or you're into story narrative games. Again, you're still sitting around a table with those Cheetos and dice and 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 charts and books and such. The lighting is bright so people can see. There's probably laptops or tablets or and definitely cell phones all over the place. There may be pets roaming around and the sounds of cohabitators in the background, spouses, children, roommates, what have you, or traffic outside. I've done some horror-themed videos on the, on this channel, and I've always set, set it up so that the lighting was different, that my vocal intonations were slightly different, I metered it differently, but it came out cold. I didn't label them horror. I gave them a name. You didn't know what the name was. The thumbnail may have given you some clue, but you didn't know what you were going to get. So the reveal was more out of the blue. It caught the reader or the viewer off guard. So I think if you want to do horror well in that setting, you have to just turn it on. You suddenly have to just immerse yourself, the GM, in that horror state of mind. Now, I haven't used horror a lot. It just isn't a genre that I love in role-playing games. I've described gruesome, horrible things, but I wasn't necessarily eliciting the overall atmosphere of horror. And my goal, when I did use it the one time very effectively, it wasn't to scare the characters. It wasn't to create an atmosphere where the characters would be afraid. That's easy to do. It's a mechanic. Make a sanity check or make a fear check or you've uh, you've clocked up X number of insanity points or something or worn your sanity down. That's how you do it mechanically. Now, my goal in the one time I really pulled it off well was to scare the players. I wasn't aimed at their characters. Their characters were incidental. The table was incidental. The Cheetos and the soda and the character sheets and dice and miniatures, all of it didn't matter. What mattered is I wanted to scare the players. 
I wanted them to, them to find themselves suddenly, unexpectedly, inexplicably immersed in something they were not prepared for. And it isn't something I really thought about deeply. It is something I kind of played with. How am I going to pull this off? And I really hadn't made the final decision until the moment arose. And then suddenly it was there. It was just in my head. Now, occasionally, I would get up and pace when I was GMing. Mostly because I would get cramped just sitting in a chair for all that long. Occasionally because I had a big-ass map on the wall, and sometimes I would have to point things out to people. I mean, it was a big map. It's like six feet long, and, you know, three feet high or four feet high. It was a big map. Um, the joys of having my own room dedicated to gaming, really. It was, theoretically, it was, a, it was a dining room. And what I did in that moment was I turned to a corner in an uncharacteristic manner. I didn't do this ever. I'm not saying I wouldn't look out a window once in a blue moon. But I turned into a corner where two walls met. In fact, it was the alcove to the door to the outside. So I actually stepped into this alcove which was not well lit, and into the corner. And then I turned around, and I was someone else. And I began to speak as the character in the game. This particular character was a ghost. That's ir ir immaterial to what's going on. But I was suddenly utterly immersed in this improvisational act that none of them knew about. Even though they were aware that this tower had been built by someone and they had a good inkling of who that someone was. They didn't know he was still there. And I let him possess me completely. And I was him. I don't even remember his name at the moment. He was a fantasy version of Stradivarius. And as I emoted this ghost's anguish and regret and longing for something that could never be done, because he was dead. Because he couldn't ever finish it. And I put that all into my motion and my voice and my face. And the people around that table were afraid. Now remember, this is a group of people that regularly saw their GM playing with a switchblade when he got bored. So, being afraid of me was a hard target. But I did it. Because they weren't expecting it. Because I was somebody else. Someone they'd never seen, never heard of before acting in a manner they've never encountered, in a mannerisms that aren't me. And I scared them. Not for long. They all caught on. But that didn't matter that it wasn't for long. What mattered was, is I did it. There's a supplement out there for GURPS called Creatures of the Night. Highly recommended. Essentially, it's a monster manual of modern horror creatures. And one of them is a crow that if you look at it, you can die. And I had been reading this passage before I left for work one morning. 
And as I walked to work in the dark, it was early, it was winter. I almost, I always walked to, the, to work in the dark to get to the bus in the dark in the wintertime. And I walked the same way every day. I heard the same sounds. And that morning I heard a crow. And I would normally look at crows because I find them fascinating. I find corvids interesting. But that morning I heard that crow. And for the briefest second. For less than a heartbeat, I was scared. The author of that passage put that in my head. And there it was. And I wrote to the man in an era before the internet. And I told him that. And I thanked him. Because it was the best thing I'd ever read. The only time something had ever scared me in real life that had been in a gaming supplement. And he thanked me and sent me, some, sent me an article he had written as, as, as in gratitude. But that's what happened. That's where the horror came from. It was out of the blue. And that's how I think you have to do it. And that's why I think it's so incredibly hard. No game system is going to help you. No mechanic is going to aid you. You just have to do something somehow that scares the players and is not involved with their characters at all. 